Hey everybody, how you doing? We're back for the final hour of trading on Wednesday, August the 24th. And uh, it's 2022 and we're finishing off the day. Um, something tells me some of you option writers are making money today. I just have this vibe that you're making money today. Uh, the Dow's up 40, 46 points. Is that right? Yeah, 46 points. Um, nothing great has happened today. It, it was higher. Uh, the Dow got up to uh, the high range today, 33,095. Right now it's 32,952. So we're about 80 points from the high, but we were only up 120, 125 points today. Um, there is no recovery coming to this market from that 600 point loss two days ago 150 point loss yesterday now we're up 41 so we're, we're not getting it back and i don't think we're going to uh s p up 10 nasdaq up 57 at the moment um sofi has been a busy stock today lots of trading and lots of activity on sofi um we were opening this morning around 670 we got up to six dollars 87 cents so that was around 10 30. We knew the president's announcement was coming a few hours later, but it couldn't hold that level. It it, it was around the six dollar and um, sixty five, sixty eight cent range when I guess the announcement came out to confirm the rumors of a ten thousand um, dollar you know deduction against loans outstanding plus another ten thousand under the Pell Grant and well, all the details. There are lots of details. Um, it's dropped ever since. It, it, we got down to 637. We're now 641. But 93.9 million traded today. And um, the speculation is that uh, SoftBank has sold out of whatever they had left uh, in their possession. And the thinking was about 30 odd million shares were left in their hands. We think it's all gone. It may have been sold overnight last night in the pre-market this morning. I can't say for sure. But that stock is now out of their hands and they can't sell anymore. So cross our fingers. The hope now is that things settle in and the, the long-term phenomenal upside of this company will now truly be realized by its shareholders with an up move in the stock. Might take another day or two to kind of settle out, but we're up 24 cents. Okay, 93.9 million traded today on SoFi. Oh, okay, another hurdle has been overcome by that company's uh, shareholders, I guess. Um, GameStop, $32.64 is the current price of the stock, down 89 cents on the day. We've been negative practically within about, I don't know, 20 minutes of the opening, 30 minutes of the opening. We've been negative ever since. We had a little run up to 34.94 that couldn't last and uh, here we are now at 32.64 the low of the day 32.44 so you can see how you know close we are to the low 4.4 million traded that's 1.1 million pre-split we're not going to do two million shares today not not unless something big is going on so it, it's really dead in the water here down 87 cents 32 66 ish a share right now which means of course those of you who've written options last week the week before this monday tuesday who wrote options that are expiring this friday or next friday you are watching your contracts drop of course all obviously anyone who did rollovers into october september october december january those are all backing off as well and if there are any of you out there that can buy back your existing calls that are way down there in time and you can replace those with calls that are expiring in september or october rather than january or beyond next year come on back definitely uh buy back these i don't know what you wrote if you wrote 44s buy those back and write 36s that expire in a month or two from now bring your time frame way back to where we are now or as close as possible lower your lower your exercise price somewhat and yeah maybe you can maybe maybe you can buy back your calls that you wrote for next year at a lower price then you can write the calls closer in in dollars and in time and that would give you more cash in your account and less time to wait for, uh, you know, 
the expiry. So uh, do your work, do your homework like I tell you to do in the, cl in the classes that you're taking. Do your homework on the option chains and check those out. Beautiful stuff, uh, everybody. Exciting. Um, it looks like Michael didn't listen to me today. Um, he didn't listen and he wrote a bunch of SoFi $7 contracts today. He sold them at 18 cents. They're now sitting at a nickel. Uh, how dare you, Michael, not listen to me? How dare you make over $1,900 without listening to me? How dare you? Um, how do you live with yourself? Uh, anyway. <laughs> Uh, Brian says, looks like I can only make money going way out. Strike of $6, October 21, 2022, uh, 93.97 market. My fees to write a contract are like 10 bucks. So the most I could get with one contract is $77. You're getting ripped off on commissions. That is ridiculous. Uh, no, that is extremely high. Uh, I wouldn't be writing $6 calls on SoFi, to be honest. I, I really wouldn't be doing that. Anyway, I think the stock's going higher. I really do. Okay. Welcome, everybody. Um, let's see. Uh, what else is going on? Uh, yeah, well, Brian wants to know, Michael, how many so far have you got? Uh, 11,000. Brian says, I am proud of you. Um, what's your average, Michael? It's high, like 1247. But he's bringing money in every time he writes, and that helps bring that average cost back down. Way to go, buddy. All righty. Uh, well, so what else is going on? Um, uh, let's go. Let's go. Um, uh, Wing Commander, evening all. I missed the earlier show. Shame on me. Welcome one. Welcome, everybody. Nick, thank you for being thumbs up number 35. All of you who are already hitting the thumbs up button before I have a chance to beg for thumbs ups. Thank you all so much for this. 52 have come in already. Bring in those thumbs ups for me. Help help me out and get me uh, get, get us some momentum on this show. Mallow, I'm number 41. yippee ki -yay. I'm 38, baby. Um, staying posted, H. Gregory, 33, Jeff is at 43, Amy saying hi, y'all, White Feather, 44, Brian, look at BBBBBY, flatlining crime, anybody? Uh, BBBY, what is that stock doing now? 1017, oh my gosh. Olivia's here at number 45, hello, Olivia, welcome. Uh, nice to see you, see you, nice to see you. Um, let's see, what else is going on? Um. Nick has shorted something called ENPH. I don't even know what that is. Um, what else is going on here? Um, uh, hey, Uncle Bruce. Uh, uh, Jeff wants to know, if I write options, do they all expire worthless at expiry or just those out of the money? Those out of the money expire worthless. In the money, they get exercised. Um, no matter what, no matter how much in the money. Uh, Jeff, the trick is to, uh, you know, write them out of the money or write them, you know, just just barely out of the money for say as soon as possible for example i was telling people on monday write game stops for this friday uh, i think i was telling people to write 33s 34s five six or something like that and uh, if the stock stays under your exercise price your contract will collapse in value wednesday thursday friday of this week and it's happening as we speak and in in truth some of these contracts will expire worthless friday they may or may not still be here. These folks who wrote these contracts, they may or may not still hold them that long. They might buy them back later this afternoon or tomorrow sometime, and we'll see what's going on. Michael, I I'm sorry. I trust you, but I don't believe you. And uh, Michael, I believe you, but I don't trust you. And we're all good here. Um, <laughs> Nick saying earlier, I shorted CRWD and TOL and combined made out like a bandit, made 9300 bucks short in those guys on day trades. Uh, Michael says to Jeff, "Hey, anything one penny in the money, uh, those are getting exercised. Don't don't be don't be a bag holder. Buy them back before they expire. Even if they're only worth a nickel or eight cent, just buy them back. Don't get exercised, and then move on. And that's always a good strategy. Uh, write a new contract Friday if you can buy them back super cheap, a dime, eight cents, six cents. You can buy them down there, and then write for next Friday the contracts you want to write." and enjoy depreciation all day Friday and the next week. Anything under the strike will expire worthless. Mentats, Brian, are you in Canada? If so, switch to IKBR. No fees compared to other brokers that charge 5 to 10 bucks for writing contracts. Nick Amorier is number 52. Beach Boy, Jeff, those in the money will be exercised. The others, you are right, they'll expire. Wing Commander, um, I went into a family a toy store earlier today. 
I kind of understand why Uncle Bruce continues banging on about mom and pop stores. I spent 20 plus minutes talking to the owner about the good old days. Great service too. Yeah, good luck doing that with the, uh, you know, the uh, 17 and a half year old high school kid who couldn't give a crap about anything about you or whatever because they hate their life they hate their job they hate their manager they're being worked to death and they haven't got a second to talk to you because <laughs> there's a camera on them and they are not allowed to uh, socialize they're there to work um yeah talking to owners is kind of nice absolutely christina how you doing a uh, moon man moon. my average on sofi was um 18 bucks i leveraged down to 10 16 and i have 2300 of those nice going Deuce Caboose, my opinion why SoFi isn't responding better is they put a 5% of income payment cap on student loan payments for undergrads. Why would you refi when you are capped? We shall see. Deuce Caboose, my two cents worth of penny. Um, Deuce Caboose, I'm number 62 on the thumbs up here. Uh, Larry Titus, I am number 60. Wing Commander couldn't leave without buying some toys for my baby boy. They do not make stores like this anymore. That's right. That's right. When you're in a mom and pop store, um, you have to look at it as a privilege to be there, not as uh, you doing them a favor. They're doing you a favor. Um, they are putting their capital on the line. They're putting their lives on the line, life savings, and they are working their tails off to try to offer you something they hope you like. They know what they're doing. They know their stuff, and they're there to take care of you and really we owe these people our business because the chain stores they don't give a crap about us they're owned by hedge funds out of wall street and they're publicly traded companies and every 13 weeks they have to make the brokers in wall street happier where these mom and pops it's their lives it's their survival they're trying to put kids through school they're trying to raise a family support mom and pop stores no matter what they are corner stores a shoe store a shoe repair place uh, I'd rather go to an independent uh, mom and pop operation than a, than a chain because sometimes with chain stores, you don't know who you're dealing with the next time you go in and the next time after that and because they don't care. They, how can they care? How can they have any um, um, interest in your, uh, your happiness? They don't give a crap about you. They just got a job. That's all it is. Anyway, um, how you all doing? Um, to, oh, Tesla splits tomorrow, lame duck says, three to one. Yeah, um, that's true. Uh, Deuce Caboose, I was really hoping they wouldn't incorporate a low fixed rate, but a payment cap based on income is sort of similar. Brian, Mentats, yes, I am a, I'm in Canada, and I do have an, an IBKR account. I really like Quest Trade's platform, but if IB has minimal fees, maybe I will, shall switch over there. Uh, Credit Savage, uh, Biden cancels. 10,000 student loan debt and SoFi goes down. Why the face? Higher interest rates means more money and 10 grand per person that uh, took out a SoFi loan will be paid by the government. I'm missing something. I know uh, it's the, the stock should be going up, not down. I agree. I'm totally with you on this, you guys. It just defies logic. But then we're in a bizarro world these days, aren't we? Christina, I keep flipping my GameStop. I made a thousand Monday and a thousand Tuesday, and I can sell now for five seventy-five. Stock st stalker, what do you think about VET Vermilion Energy? No idea. Don't follow them. Christina, I moved my strikes to thirty-three bucks. Beach Boy, has anyone told you about shrinkage? You, you mean uh, it shrinks? DQ number sixty-eight. Thumbs up, Jeff. Um, then since there are swings in the market, like we've been seeing. We, uh, isn't it a better strategy to write options three to four weeks out to be able to write out the stock's price swings? Well, Jeff, you can swing uh, uh, option trades, you know, with stock trading if you want to, and you can do it with a one-week contract, a two-week contract, an eight-week contract. You may find, though, that some contracts don't so move as much for you um, to make it worth your while. It's all a question also of how many are you writing. If you can write, say, 10 or 20 at a time, and you can scoop 50 cents a buck at a, a swing uh, times 10 or 20 contracts. You're making, you know, 500 to to $1,000, 10 to 20 at a time for 50 cent movement. Uh, there's some potential there. Um, um, it all it all depends. If you're just doing one contract in, you know, out and then back in and out. In, it, it, you can make 50 bucks at a time, $100 at a time, 150 If you are pl playing it right. 
but now you're gambling on the market rather than just letting the time depreciation make you your money. Uh, but again, it's it's you can do the option writing program under various ways that makes it comfortable for you. Uh, no question. Arturo, I am thumbs up 65. Andrew, I'm 69. Um, initial says I was number 23. And now I'm 73. Sorry, I'm 73. Bought back my GameStop calls. 80% profit. Looking to write again, says Coyote. Coyote is one happy, happy guy. Uh, why did SoFi sell so much SoFi? They got out. They sold everything because they've got major money problems. They have lost billions on all kinds of stuff, tens of billions, and they're they're liquidating a bunch of stuff to pay off bills. Um, Uncle Bruce and Boo, Nick is saying, I will cover Foot Locker short when it drops to 33. So far, unrealized gain of 35 grand on 20,000 shares, average 38.5. Boo is saying, Uncle Bruce, what are your thoughts on SoFi cash secured puts for January 2024? These are a $5 strike. For a buck and a quarter, a 25% on your money or buy for $375. Uh, Boo, uh, look, um, you know, you, you can do this, of course. Uh, you pick up these, you, you, you sell these puts now, bring in a buck and a quarter, and you commit to buying the stock for five bucks a share until Jan 24. But of course, because you're paid $125 in premium up front, you're only paying $375 for the stock. I like the downside price of that. Um, if the shares stay where they are, go higher and or, you know, really go higher, they go for like eight, 10, $12. These puts will be 25 cents each 30 cents, which means you buy them back there. Keep the change again. Option writing can pay if the stock goes up, if you're writing cash secured puts. So don't mind that trade. Um, don't mind it. it it's a slow motion trade. Um, it's going to take a while, but, uh, Hey, it's a, it's a, it, it can make you money. Uh, Michael, the credit average, um, you have to factor in dumb people reacting. Uh, Michael says uh, to uh, to credit average. Deuce Caboose, Uncle Bruce, what do you make of the new student loan executive order with SoFi? Uh, we knew it was coming. We heard about it. Um, SoFi should go up, but that's my personal opinion too. Uh, and maybe it will uh, in a few days. We'll see what's going on. Uh, will it go through and will it survive the legal challenges? That's the question. I, I don't know. It's going to be a great election platform uh, to, to run on. So the Democrats are going to, you know, say to the world, you vote for us. We're putting this through. Don't vote for us and go Republican. I can guarantee you this will die on the table and you will not see 10 grand at all. Now, how many millions of you students out there or former students out there will vote? Democrat to make sure this happens? Or are you going to vote Republican in spite of it, because of spite, and um, put the Republicans in charge in the uh, so the House and the Senate, or either or, and this dies on the operating table, and you don't get 10 grand uh, forgiveness. It's your call. Vote against yourself or not. Anyway, I'm also reading that interest will not apply if monthly payments are being made, which is capped at 5% of your monthly income for undergrad degrees. Um, uh who is this here w would it be wise to build a portfolio with atip and smart rent um, a portfolio um i don't know it depends on how big is your portfolio you got a 500 hundred dollar portfolio knock yourself out you got a fifty thousand dollar portfolio maybe you know maybe you want to diversify a little bit uh, and not be quite so uh into one you know into one thing that's my guess on it um maybe i'm maybe i'm overreacting or Maybe I'm not, um, but I, you know, smaller, smaller, a smaller portfolio. There are those out there that will put everything into these stocks to, um, you know, try to max out a big, uh, you know, mother of all gains. Um, it, it's up to you. It's totally your call. How you want to? How do you want to approach it? Not much more I can say about that. Um, uh, to quote Forrest Gump, and that's what I have to say about that. There you go. Uh, welcome all to the program today. Uh, great to have you all here. Um, thank you for being subscribers to this channel. Thank you for being uh, lurkers. Thank you for being Gold Bagel members. And thank you for being uh, chilling with Uncle Bruce members. Uh, love all you guys. Appreciate it. We're going to go to members only now on the chat. Um, and we'll do that for the rest of the day here. Um, please become a member and, and join the uh, gang. And make sure to pop up your uh, knee emojis uh, to uh, get that market to do what you want it to do. 
because that's what the power of the knee emojis are, in case you don't know. Uh, by the way, thank you also, um, a whole bunch of you out there, uh, for um, making the move here. A number of you have been making this move uh, this uh, this last couple of days, uh, since last week. You've been uh, making a donation down here to this PayPal uh, account uh, for two ninety nine ninety nine US to get your hands on four classes for the price of three. You know who you are. There's a bunch of you out there. I want to thank you all. Uh, for those of you who've made those moves, um, go to my website, stockmarketsthebruce.ca. Check out the classes I have available on how to be an option writer. If you want to join the gang here and make money writing options, check out that website. You can see all the 13 classes that are available there on how to do this. Poor man cover calls, spreads, all kinds of stuff. Um, and then uh, grab some classes. Um, send me a private email uh, at the Bruce Farmer uh, at hotmail.com right there. Send two ninety nine ninety nine to this PayPal thing here, and then send me an email. Say Bruce, I would like four classes. Just paid you, just sent you two ninety nine ninety nine. Here are the four classes I would like to have. My recommendation to all of you who know nothing: classes one, two, three, and four. Start right there, and then watch five, six, seven, and eight, and then watch nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Not in one day. You can't do it in one day because each class is one and a half to two and a quarter hours. So they're they're done in front of a live audience. Most of the live audience are people who are followers of this channel, and they're right here. They're right, they're right here. These folks were in. A good number of these folks were the live audience during the class. So they're asking the questions they're asking now in various versions of and they learned how to write stock options. And uh, this is why a number of these folks, they tell you what they're doing and you realize, wow, geez, if you wrote 10 calls at 250 a call and bought them back for a buck 50, I mean, that's not like a, a, a big home run, but just selling them for 250 each and buying them back for 150, that's a hundred dollars a contract times 10 contracts, that's a thousand dollars. Some of these folks are doing this in like a day, two days, three days. They're, they're clearing $1,000 on a $2,500 initial position that they got paid up front for because you sell the contract first when you write and then you buy it back at a lower price and you keep the change. Um, very nice. Uh, very, very nice money being made here by a number of people. Um, and you can make enough money to quit your day job doing this. There's enough in here for that. You just have to learn how to uh, how the options work. You just have to understand how m options react and how they uh, how they um, depreciate and how they collapse in value. Um, really neat stuff. Okay, thank you everybody for for being here with me. Um, check it out and uh, let's see what's happening. Uh, what else is going on here? Uh, I'm trying to keep up with the comments and. Uh, uh, here we go. Okay, 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 okay. I am number 68, says Lorraine. Welcome, Lorraine. Um, Splair, I had these uh, I had these with a gaming shop in my district. They could sell under the table uncut games from Austria. Ten years, they changed this business. Something more people... I don't know what's going on here. Um, let's move on. Um, Goody, yes, very happy today. The loan news feels like the first positive news I've heard. In God, probably a year in the market, benefiting covered call writers again. Good day, good day, generally happy. Um, and let's see what else. Uh, what is the relevance of record date of split Tesla stock? It was last Wednesday. If I buy a Tesla stock today, will I be getting three tomorrow? Yeah, if you own Tesla stock tonight, you'll have three times as many shares tomorrow. Um, they will split tomorrow, and everybody will have triple the number no matter when you buy them. Uh, let's see what else is going on here. Um, um, yeah, here we go. Kevin, uh, Karen D is saying in my area, um, the big toy and game stores went out of business, leaving us with nothing. Yeah, I know they run the little guy out of business and then they're so poorly run themselves. They go out of business. And there are no independent toy stores left anywhere. Yeah, I know. That's same with shoe stores. They used to all be mom and pops. Shoe stores at one time were meant mom and pop stop or shops. The owners would go to Europe. They would go uh, South America. Um, they would bring shoes in from all over the world. And now 
uh, your shoes are made in Korea, South Korea, uh, Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, and they're brought in by the big boys, and they're crap. Uh, unless you go to high-end shops that where they're made in Europe, uh, but then you're paying, you know, really high prices. Splair, take a credit for 200 options on SoFi right calls. Wait a little, pulls everything. I'm not sure what's going on. Okay, um, let's keep going. Let's see what's going on here. Um, SM says I got 7500 of uh, ATIP for 92 average. Um, and uh, what else is going on here? Um, Nick is saying I still don't have uh, the Uncle Bruce mug. Got to get you one of those. You know, I, I have. I have. I actually have a special mug for you that um, I, I got to figure out how to get it to you. But I'm I'm going to send you a special mug. Uh, I, I got something. Just just kind of leave that with me. Um, let's see what's going on here. Um, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Um, do 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 do. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, a DQ. You're you're too young to remember. Um, I'm talking about mom and pops, where uh, the owners are from Argentina and Brazil. They used to be South American shoes, high end leather stuff, really good stuff. This is way back. This is 40 years ago, so it's okay. Um, but um, there used to be a shopping mall here in Calgary that opened up back in the uh, around 7980. And it was a boutique mall, a really a high-end boutique shopping mall, indoor. And there were there had to have been over a hundred shops in there, and they were practically all mom and pops. And they had all kinds of clothing, uh, like a fashion fashion mall and uh, mom and pop fashion stores back in the day. And there were uh, husbands and wives that were Spanish, Portuguese, Italian, French, Swiss. German, UK, um, from South America, of course, Canada. Uh, and these folks were bringing in clothing, shoes, accessories from all over the world from their home countries. They knew their turf. And so the Italian uh, store was bringing in Italian men's and women's fashion items. And uh, there were there were customers in this town that were really well attired in high quality Italian clothing, um, just like from back home. Um, and then there were the Swiss guys uh, and girls. They would bring in the Swiss made shoes or they would be the Italian leather store. Like they would have the Italian leather goods from the uh, from the Florence, Italy area. We're talking regional, too. I mean, we're talking really regional. Um, those who were making some dough. And those who understood what fashion really was, you know, they were looking for quality merchandise. They would flock to this mall. Maybe once every week or two, they'd pop in there. And you'd do the walk around. And, um, of course, every season, new clothing would arrive. And you'd get to know the owner. The owner would get to know you. And uh, the owners got to know exactly the kind of clothing you love to have. And uh, they had their phone numbers. I mean, they had the owners had the customers' phone numbers at the office or at home, and they would call them up when a new shipment of stuff came in. And uh, these folks would come running in that night after on the way home from work. They'd pop in there and see their favorite store, and uh, they would pick up uh, the latest, you know, shoes or clothing or or whatever. And, and the gals, exactly the same thing from 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 Paris, from Spain, from Portugal, from Italy, uh, you name it. I mean, worldwide fashion. Uh, these stores did really well. That mall did really well for the first probably five years. Unfortunately, by 1985, the, uh, the major takeover of retail was on where uh, junk bonds came out and um, through, uh, through uh, the New York. And all of a sudden... Um, uh, business people uh, would uh, would pile up a bunch of cash and they would buy up uh, regional uh, shoe stores or clothing stores and then would, would would franchise them and then replicate the franchise again and again and again. And so over 10, 15 years, 
these boutique malls got annihilated and and or were shifting out of the boutique mom and pops into the of chain stores and uh you would take you would see uh three stores close down in like a three month time frame and then those three stores would be boarded up the walls would be blown out and then they would open up with a, a chain store there would be a instead of three 800 to 1000 square foot stores there'd be one 3500 square foot store the landlord was happy because the landlords were also being bought up by hedge funds big investors through junk bonds and they wanted to deal with big clients i mean big clients big owners big clients and so out went the mom and pops into strip malls if they went anywhere um and they would leave these malls because they'd be priced out and uh, of course in the electronic game as you may re may or may not know um when if you wanted to buy a brand new computer system in 1990 Two, 93, 94, you were likely buying it from a mom and pop computer shop that might be in a strip mall somewhere, maybe in a, in a shopping mall. But within 10 years, by the 80 into the, uh, into the uh, sorry, into the 2000s, you were going to a future shop or to a Best Buy or to another Circuit City type store to buy your computers and your VCRs and everything else because the mom and pops got wiped out. Um, Sony and Hitachi and uh, Acer and all the other brands wouldn't deal with mom and pops anymore unless you could buy 10,000 units. And so the best buys would say to the uh, suppliers, "You, I will buy from you 100,000 uh, copies of that VCR machine. Every model you have, you've got five different price points. We'll buy 100,000 of each of them, but you can't sell to mom and pops in my territory. So if I got shops in Denver, you can't sell to anybody else in Denver. If I'm in, uh, if I'm in Vegas, you can't sell to anybody else in Vegas. And on it would go. And eventually, the mom and pops got kicked out. They got eliminated, and they weren't, they couldn't buy anymore. And these large importers were only dealing with the big boys. And that's how the business transformed into what we have. And the bondholders wanted to get paid, and so the bondholders. Uh, made sure that these outfits became big, big, big and crushed the competition, which they could easily do. And the moment pops were eviscerated. Um, and uh, welcome to 2022. Here we are. And now we don't have uh, we don't have a uh, future shop anymore. We don't have Circuit City. We don't have these secondary. Uh, uh, we have Best Buy. That's it. There's Best Buy. And sometimes you get really good deals at Best Buy. Sometimes you don't. Um, and um, um, Amazon is a, a place where retailers do go, but you don't know who you're buying from at Amazon. Generally speaking, you don't know. You think you know, but you might not be buying who you think you're buying from. And so it's a crapshoot, isn't it? And so welcome to the world of retail. And uh, the mom and pops are uh, gone. Sports, sports stores ex have absolutely been eliminated. Anyone like um, the kind of store I used to have where we sold the, we sold caps, sweatshirts of any team you wanted in the book big four sports leagues we had it t-shirts we had jerseys coffee mugs keychains all that stuff those mom and pop stores are gone they are 99 percent of them have been eviscerated from existence and now there's lids uh there's maybe a Foot Locker with their limited edition stuff that they've got limited stuff but the so-called gigantic store with everything in it from every league including NCAA teams and all that stuff they're gone man they're gone they're on it's online now they've been eliminated by the leagues themselves and you are the loser you the public because you can't go into a store and look at this stuff anymore and uh, go in there with your uh, your child and watch the reaction to what really turns them on and then you know what to buy them for christmas because they saw it in the store or uh, wives would go with their husbands into the sports store and the wife would study his every move and she would figure out what jersey he really wanted or what hat he really wanted or what and then she'd come back an hour later and buy it <laughs> and um and then all of our regular clients, like I said, I used to be in this business and, and all of our regulars used to come in every week. What's new? What's new? What's new? What came What came in this week? What came in next? What are you expecting next week? When will the so-and-so jerseys come out? I understand the 
all-star game is a so-and-so for the NHL. When are the NHL all-star jerseys coming in? Because I know you're going to have them. And we we did service, baby. We did service. But, yeah, it's gone. It's all over. It's all over. I bet the special mug is shorter than the mug I have now. Uh -huh. And uh, DQ, uh, yeah, I was making a drug smuggling joke, says DQ. Uh, smuggling. Flint, um, Nick, hope the samples work for you. Um, Cam, I bought a $20 put on AMC for this Friday for 380. My account is showing it, it's a, it is a loser. High volatility, but the seller will have to buy the shares at 20 and I have to purchase at 10. Loser? 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 Uh, Nick, um, Uncle Bruce, just a matter of time. Once a footlocker drops to 33 or below and I hit my goal, you know, I want a hundred thousand in one day. Uh, a big payroll donation will be heading your way. You are, you are a PayPal donor. You are the man, and I, I, I'm cheering on the demise of that stock. <laughs> Absolutely, my friend. Uh, thank you, everybody, for uh, for popping in here. Thank you for all of you who who support us with PayPal donations and buying the classes. And those of you who want to see me one on one. Uh, those who want to do one on one sessions, thank you. Uh, this Sunday, I have available openings. Uh, only this Sunday. If you're interested, let me know. Send me a private email and say, Bruce, I'd like to have a one-on-one -on -one with you this Sunday. Can I see you? And we'll see if we can set something up for you. We are uh, 24 minutes away from the end of the day here. That is the deal. Uh, waiting for the final, uh, waiting for the final bell to come through. Uh, Wing Commander, I was talking to the owner about prices for collectibles and his take that, uh, that he can't compete with online retailers because those folks are using all kinds of loopholes to undercut his prices. Yeah, oh, that's right. And then, of course, you don't know if you're buying fakes. Uh, you don't know if you're buying, uh, you know, knockoff stuff and uh, what have you. With At least with a real store, you can see it live. But, uh, yeah, he's this is the problem. Absolutely. We used to have customers come into my clothing store, and uh, they would uh, walk around and look at all the hockey jerseys. And uh, they would try on a, a medium or a large, and then they they put it back, and then they'd look around the rest of the store, and then after ten minutes they'd be gone. And then um, about a week and a half later, they they'd be in the mall, walking up and down the mall with a brand new hockey jersey in the uh, in the large size or the medium size, and we'd find out from a friend of theirs. Oh yeah, he came into your store to try it on, and then he went online and ordered it. Yeah, he he, he bought it online because he got it for five bucks less than what you're selling it for. The loyalty was incredible. Um, uh, my store isn't there anymore. Uh, so if he's in that mall, there is no sports store anymore. Uh, he helped kill it. Um, but then again, this was the common thing. This was done in the last ten years to everybody. T-shirts, for hats, for for hoodies, sweatshirts, you name it. Uh, people would come into our stores, would shop, would look around to see what's available, even take photos of some of our stuff, go home and find it online for cheaper and then buy it. And we also had uh, people who would brag to us how well they did by buying a jersey online. <laughs> I mean, brag to us, telling us to our face how they saved 20 bucks buying it online. Um, then he'd come in the store wearing it, and I'd I'd have to break it to him. I said, well, you know that jersey you're wearing? Yeah, that's a, a knockoff. Uh, it's from China, and it's not the original game-worn jersey you think you have. You, you paid $150 for it, and I have it for $250. Uh, that is a knockoff. And then I'd show them our jersey, and I'd show them why ours is the real thing <laughs> with all the protection and the holographic stuff and everything. And then they'd realize, oh, I got I got hosed, and they can't get their money back. They can't send it back. I mean, it was just laughable. It's not funny, actually, for a lot of businesses that went out of business. Beach Boy, yeah, Bruce, man, I would like another one-on-one -on -one to, uh, to go through some more stuff. Are you free Sunday at 12 Eastern time? Uh, yes, I think I am. Uh, you know what to do. Um, Michael, for FYI, for those NHL fans, don't buy from Fanatics. The quality is horrible. Buy from Hockey Authentic, Canadian company that ships to the U.S. Yeah, I had a good friend of mine who had a fantastic store. I have a really good buddy of mine. He had an incredible store. And uh, slowly but surely, the, uh, the suppliers of the clothing were cutting him off from buying. Um, he had been a uh, loyal client for 
30 years and carried everything from everybody. And uh, eventually it got to the point where he couldn't buy baseball anymore. He couldn't buy basketball anymore. They wouldn't sell to him. They were only going to sell to the big chain stores. And in this city of one and a half million, 1.2 million, uh, there used to be probably 20 mom and pop shops you could go to and five or 10 big stores. Now there are maybe four big stores and nobody has the selection that he had. Nobody. Uh, not even one-tenth of what he used to carry. So you want to get something unique for Christmas in the sports lo logo world? You're hooped. You're now online only, and now you take your chances that they'll even ship to you from the U.S. to Canada. Um, it, it's, it's, it is, that business has been eviscerated by the leagues themselves with their policies and the big players that uh, took over all these regional outfits and now are, are dying uh, because uh, they don't have the selection and the customers are going, you're nothing special. You're just nothing special. And these guys are paying top dollar inside um, shopping malls, top dollar. And the taxes are killing them from the city. And now the minimum wages are rising dramatically. These guys are getting crushed and they will soon go, they will liquidate out because that's what big stores do when they can't, it doesn't work. They just, they get told by their bankers, pull the pin and get out. And that's what's going to happen. So soon there will be no sports stores in your hometown at all. Even Lids one day will go under. They will not make it. And uh, there you go. You'll be online only. Dave, the Mac guy, wait, Uncle Bruce, was your card shop in Calgary in the 90s? I had a sports card store in the 90s. I did, Chinook Mall. I had a sports card store in Chinook Mall in the 90s. Yeah, yeah. That was uh, that was a wild ride. <laughs> that was crazy. Crazy times. Um, and then I had a clothing store uh, for sports clothing um, in uh, about... Uh, Oh, gosh, time is flying by now from 08 to 011 or 12. Yeah, that's a long time ago. I was a lot younger then. I was I was probably only about in my 20s. <laughs> like, you know, 15 years ago, I was in my 20s. That was crazy. Um, D, uh, D, BW, I agree. When mom and pops went away, quality control went down the tubes. I bought a rock T-shirt at a mall shop the other day. The printing was crooked and the sleeves don't line up. China crap. Yeah, Dave the Mac guy. That's why I recognize you. You look familiar to me. <laughs> uh, what were you? Were you six years old at the time? Uh, how? <laughs> I think somebody made a donation while I was yapping away here. Uh, somebody made a donation for some classes. Uh, am I right? Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, yeah, we will take care of that. Um, somebody from Brooklyn. Uh, sent me a donation for a number of classes, and we will take care of you after the uh, after the show. You got it, buddy. You got it. We'll take care of you. We'll keep that anonymous. Uh, thank you, thank you for that uh, for that uh, purchase, and we'll get you we'll get you set up with uh, with all your classes there that you need. No problem. Um, uh, here we go. Nico's telling me I, I just picked up classes five to twelve. Nico, it was, I got it. I got it. We'll take care of you. Okay, Dave. I might have been 10 at the time. Um, and Nico, hope to leave work soon. Uh, well, you're, you're getting closer now. I can tell you right now, you got some work to do. But, you know, take this as a college course. Pretend this is a part-time college course. And if it gets you out of your job in the next six months, greatest college course you've ever taken, my friend. It's going to change your life. Um, yeah, yeah. You let me know if you have any problems. We'll take care of you. Good stuff, buddy. Thank you. We'll get we'll get you once once you get those course courses done once you do those classes, if you feel that you need a one on one, uh, then you can we can talk about that later and uh, we'll we'll get you set up. You'll be on your way, man. Uh, Nick, market's looking up here at the end. Is it a fake out? We've got sixteen minutes to go. Uh, Mar Nico, just getting started, but I have a very good feeling. Took classes one to four, and my eyes have gone whoa. Classes one to four. I got to take five to the, I got to go five to 13. Yeah, that's what's happening. That's what usually happens here. Um, I wish we could go back in time to the good old days. I'm old enough to remember. Um, those of you who do take my classes, I, I will tell you this happens time and time and time again. If you take the first four, like you take advantage of this 
$299 thing I'm telling you about, $299.99, get four classes for the price of three. You watch those first four classes, you will realize like a whole bunch of stuff will just hit you and you'll go, oh, I did I didn't know that, or I should have known that, or I hadn't thought of that. And um, nine out of 10 times, 19 out of 20 times, uh, the students will take the rest of the classes and they'll go, okay, I believe, I now, now I believe him. I, I, I trusted him, but I didn't believe him, or I believed him, but I didn't trust him, but now I trust and believe him. And uh, they, they you take all 13 and uh, get ready to start writing contracts. One at a time here, two at a time there, three. You'll work your way up. It's all good. Definitely going back to that store, as I get older, I start appreciating little things in life. It's not always about getting stuff as cheap as possible. Uh, Michael, uh, agreed wing commander, I uh, know that. Uh, yeah, you know, I, Jennifer and I had the, uh, the absolute pure delight uh, when we were in, in Switzerland the last two and a half weeks of our holiday. We were in Zermatt, as you know, if you're watching me, and we were in two hotels for the last three weeks of our stay, basically. And in both cases, they were mom and pops. And um, the the uh, the uh, the beauty of it was the, the the first one that we stayed at, which where we extended our stay by another week. We just stayed another week. That was classically run by a mom and dad with two children, family of four. They've owned it for over twenty something years, and they probably have forty five staff working for them. Um, I'm sure it's a huge number of people. Maybe maybe yeah, whatever it is. And uh, I got to meet the father. Um, it was on the last day or the second last day when we were leaving, uh, just before we were leaving. And I got to meet him behind the front desk because I'm looking at this guy and he's, there's, a, there's a gentleman in his 50s behind the counter. That's unusual in a hotel to have a gentleman. And he didn't look like he was an employee. Uh, you kind of, you could just tell by looking at the way he, his mannerisms and his way. And I, I had a question for him, and we got to talking, and quickly I dis, I discerned, you're the owner. He said, I am. And I said, I've seen you on YouTube. He said, you did? I said, you made a video about your hotel about 10 years ago, 15 years ago. It's still on YouTube. He goes, yeah. He says, uh, I was a little, a little younger then. I said, we were all younger at one time. And so we got to talking, and, and we quickly realized we're both uh, – we're both of the same ilk uh, that my father was a business owner and I grew up in the store and I worked for my dad. And he said, well, I got my son and daughter working in the restaurant. I said, that's right. I know you know, there are two youngsters in there. They're like 18, 17, 19 years old. Your daughter and your son are working in the restaurant for breakfast, the buffet breakfast. Uh, he said, yep, they're starting right there. I said, that's exactly what you do with them. You start them right there, even in the kitchen, get them in there. Um, learn how to clean hotel rooms, learn everything, do all the dirty jobs, all the grunt work. You pay them, you pay them. But just like any other employee, learn the how to run this entire business just like you did. Oh, and he and I hit it off. Oh, gosh, we hit it off. I wish I'd, wish I'd met him the first day I was there. We'd have had a coffee every day if it was possible. But this guy's a busy guy. And uh, it was such a treat, uh, pleasure. And, uh, and what a beautiful place. It's so well run. And the staff, you can tell, the staff loved their jobs. They were not treated as chattel. These staff members that worked there, they liked working there because they loved working for the family because they weren't working for the family. They were working with the family. And they were making that business a successful business, one guest at a time. And it showed. And... Uh, yeah, the Schloss Hotel in Zermatt is well-run facility, top-notch. And then the second one we were at, uh, uh, same thing, uh, family business. Uh, that one was larger, probably had 60 employees. And same thing, uh, the staff really liked working there. They really, really they couldn't be more helpful. No way could have been more helpful. It was pretty cool. Anyway, there you go. Um, Definitely going back to a store like that. Um, 
Splur, at the housing price in New York, I can totally understand why someone is buying a bunch of classes. Uh, hello, I'm number 113. Thumbs up, Splur. I hope for that person it pays off. Uh, right on, Splur. I'm thinking, well, Mirko uh, just wrote GameStop 33 expiring September the 2nd at 201. Thanks. That's eight bucks pre-split. That's fine by me. That's right. You're figuring it out. You're writing these calls, and you're only bringing in two dollars. But it, you're reminding yourself that this is this stock split four to one. This means you're getting eight oh four for September the second that, that per share. Yeah, that that's good money. That's eight hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah. That's that's all right. Way to go, Merkel. Way to go, buddy. You're on it. You're on it. Uh, we're down to ten minutes. Uh, we're done for the day here. Thank you all very much for uh, just everything that you do for us. I hope we're giving back to you. You're giving to us. And I uh, just want to get just get you guys richer. Uh, I got to get you guys becoming really rich because then you, you, you throw your money around. <laughs> uh, Gaiotti, I also still think about when I write options, pre-split. I keep thinking about the pre-split numbers. So. When I bring in 250 a contract, that's ten dollars pre-split. That's good money for a week, week and a half. Yeah. Bama Babe SoFi shares rise after POTUS debt relief headlines on CNBC. Really? Uh, where are we at now? So if I 646. Uh we were much higher this morning, weren't we, Bama Babe? It's funny how that works. There, the those guys. CNBC. Uh there's a lot left on the table over there, isn't there? There's just so much left on the table. Uh, Gaiotti, pre-split. Yes, that's right. Jeff, yes, the problem with the big box store selling cheaper junk is that the manufacturer has to produce cheaper junk, and it is very much cheaper junk. Quality is not the same anymore. That's right. Um, that's absolutely right. And the other problem, and the, real, the bitter reality is, you have national chains in Canada and the United States um, clothing stores, let's say, and they they now have product made for them on a private label basis. So they they're so huge. They're they're multi billion dollar machines. They send uh, their staff to China, to the Philippines, to Indonesia, Vietnam, Pakistan, Bangladesh, India, and they find clothing manufacturers over there that can produce. A hoodie like this, you know, the basic hoodie like this, two fifty a piece, two bucks each can be made, and they'll order, you know, ten thousand of these, uh, all sizes, all colors. They might bring in two hundred thousand of these units, uh, in their own containers, and then they land and they get shipped across the continent to distribution centers that they have because that's how many stores they've got. And then these end up on shelves at the uh, the Gap. They end up at uh, uh, Canadian Tire in Canada or, or Sport Check in Canada. They end up they end up in Lululemon with Lululemon labels on them. And they're all made overseas for pennies on the dollar. And they're charging us $39.99 at retail, $49.99, whatever the number is. And uh, they're bringing them in for like four bucks a piece. And that's how they can afford the mall rent at the most expensive shopping mall in your hometown. Uh, the landlord is charging unbelievable rents, and these guys can easily afford it because this merchandise is is uh, one tenth the price. They're getting a ninety percent margin, net, 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 when it's all said and done. And the managers of each retail store are under unbearable pressure from the regional managers and area managers to beat numbers that are impossible to reach. They are being given their daily, you, today you must hit 6,500 in sales or 16,000 in sales or whatever the numbers, and they can't ever do it. They can't ever do it. And so inevitably they are worked to death for about a year or two and then fired for total incompetence and they graduate the next one and grind that person to death. You will never see a 15 year manager of a store that is a chain store outfit they don't last that long they last two to four years and they're gone they either get moved up to regional manager or they're unloaded as damaged goods because they're damaged now these people are damaged psychologically ruined and they just want to get back to a regular life and you go into that store once a month or two never the same staff twice there's always change there's always turnover there's always turnover in these stores 
DH, I think the post-split income is actually better than pre-split. used to be 3 bucks each week in premium. Now it's 4 Gaiotti, I mean, I guess if they count that it raised from 6 10 overnight because Biden's speech didn't move it at all. There you go. DH, Gaiotti, unofficial leak came out last night, probably why it moved this morning. Gaiotti, um, DH, I definitely noticed that the first week post-split, it felt like the options buyers couldn't figure out what to pay now. I was getting asks hit and then would pull back $1 to $2 very quickly. Deuce Caboose, uh, Mitsu says SoFi is a buy after Biden forgiveness. Uh, Splare, um, we know it. We know it all. Uh, want us to get rich so we can throw money into your direction. Sooner or later, you'll be forced uh, to play Yoko Ono. We'll pay you to pay you thousands to pay her, play her because we can afford it. See, that's my master plan. Deuce Caboose can't read the article. Don't have CNBC. Nick, why do you think Chinese entrepreneurs have so much money? Get the product manufactured for pennies and sold in the USA for big time money. There you go. Of course. Uh, smoked uh, dog. I was a, a, a I was an apparel lead in Sports Authority for ten years ago. Everything there was one hundred percent markup, uh, and on their store brand, two hundred percent or more. There you go. Right there. Always huge margins. Massive, massive margins. It's all about the margins, baby. All about the margins. Uh, that's how you survive in big fashion mall locations of course absolutely of course uh and this is why going back to mom and pops i'll bring it right back to the early 1980s in this one mall i was telling you about you'd have an italian importer a, a gentleman mom, husband and wife grew up in italy come to canada become canadian citizens and opens his own store flies to Italy twice a year to do buying, to do buys. He buys clothing from factories. He knows what he wants. He knows what his customers are after. He brings in men's clothing, women's clothing, whatever it is, but he's buying from the factory with cash. He's got the dough to pay. The factories are cutting him a super deal on, on the cash buy because he's buying a couple hundred thousand bucks of the clothing in one shot from a factory. They're going to give him wholesale prices like you can't believe. No one else brings this stuff in. He's the only one into this region of the country, Canada, because there's it's a mom and pop store. It's a specialty shop. He brings this stuff in, and he's bringing in Italian uh, high-end clothing, again, at 15, 20 cents on the retail dollar. Puts it out at full retail, whatever he decides retail is. And then he offers individual clients special deals because you're dealing with the owner. So you want to buy two Italian suits, and a couple of extra shirts and ties. Either he's throwing the ties in for no extra charge. You're dropping two grand in the store. Or he's giving you 20% off if you buy another suit. Or he's offering you deals. And then at Christmas time, he's sending you the notice. They've got a super, super discount deal in November for loyal clients. And it's buy two, get one free. And he's offloading his uh, year-end stuff, getting ready for his next buy in January for next summer. And away we go, baby. That's so the high. There were high. There were high margins in mom and pop stores too, but remember, the one store had to carry the store itself, the employees of the store, the owner and his family, and their overheads for the entire year. I mean, this one store had to carry it all. And that's how they did it. And uh, the margins were there because they went over and bought in bulk. Name of the game, Matt Splare. Reading an article about oil mentioning AP, um, uh, what is this, has floated a production cut, could push prices as high as 150 barrel. I don't think so. Uh, Goyote, will GameStop break below 32.50? 32.67, I see. Is that accurate? Uh, let's double check that. 32.53 right now. Down 101, low of the day, 32.44, and we're down to two minutes to go. The Dow is up 70, S&P up 12, and NASDAQ up 49. We're going to have an update today. Not a big update, just an update. DH, well, that stink hit. I sold eight GameStop 34s at 91 cents this morning. Just bought them back at 40 cents. Thank you, sirs. I'll send some more tomorrow. I'll sell some more tomorrow. So buying a back 51 cent profit doesn't sound like much. It's $51 times eight contracts. That's $408 today cleared. Thank you. Thank you for coming out. Uh, thank you for participating. Thank you, sir. May I have another rinse and repeat tomorrow? Uh, can you make $400 a day, five days a week? That's $2,000 a week. That's $100,000 a year. Are you in or out? Are you in or out? Michael, thumbs up. DH, 
826 expiry. They die on Friday. How about that? Wing Commander bought back Friday calls, rolled some October 2140s into September 2235s. Thank you, Uncle B. People around here are making money. It's all unbelievable. It's uncanny. Um, how can that be? Uh, we got a minute to go in the day. Take the classes, figure it out. You'll you'll figure it out very quickly. These classes are pretty easy to understand, uh, but you've got to put the time in. You can rewatch them a couple of times, as many times as you want if you need to, but put in some time, learn how this is done, and put your toe in the water, just like all these folks did when they started. Larry, thank you, buddy, for hitting those bells. Uh, Deuce, we can't be greedy. All SPACs are green. I'll pump the brakes. DQ. Uh, thank you, Larry. Michael, uh, where's Deuce with my five pack? A wing commander. Larry is the man with the bells. 3252, last trade on GameStop, down a dollar one. Calls are falling off the map. Uh, tomorrow, Thursday, I have a suspicion that a bunch of my viewers will be buying back calls that are expiring on Friday that they wrote on Monday for an awful lot of extra money. It's looking good. I like it. DQ Mike, uh, he's shotgunning one. It's a four pack now. Michael's laughing, that guy, that guy, I uh, take my six pack and now he's making a four pack. Unbelievable. Uh, yes. Um, California to unveil rules to ban sales of gas powered cars, brand new vehicles, gas powered banned as of 2035 in California. It's only a decade too late. Should have been doing it now. Uh, why wait? But what can I say? It's all right. It's okay. Deuce Caboose, I'm sorry, DQ uh, wife, uh, only three now, the wife joined me. Uh, Nick, just covered ENPH short, made another 4,900 today. It is so easy, like taking candy from a baby. Giddy up, baby, making money, shorting stock and or definitely writing options. Uh, making money, writing options. Congratulations, all of you out there. Well done to all of you. Thank you, all of you, so much for uh, picking up these classes for us, from us, uh, I sure hope it's making you money. It sure looks like it is. Uh, love this. Exciting, exciting stuff. Splair, wish you all a good and enjoyable night when uh, uh, we don't see you in primetime. I'll be on tonight, 8 o'clock, primetime live with Uncle Bruce. If you're a Gold Bagel member right here, join me live tonight, and uh, let's hang out and talk about what happened today, what's happening this week, what might happen the next couple of days, and uh, talk about uh, how you guys are getting ready, if not already quitting your day jobs, becoming option writers, full-time uh, portfolio managers, and beginning world travels, too. Uh, some of you are going to be able to do this. It's pretty exciting stuff. Uh, Michael saying, crushing it, Nick. Um, Beach Boy bought back 30 GameStop covered calls of 34. Um, and let's see. Uh, bought back 30 GameStop covered calls. About five of 34 is in strike profit. If I strike from about three G's, I have money for the one on one now. Uncle Breeze, <laughs> Beach Boy has has one on one money to say the least. Uh, way I'll go, but way to go, buddy. Uh, Mirko bought back some GameStop calls sold last Friday, um, September second, thirty five to three oh nine. I bought them back for one oh six. Wouldn't wait for the last dollar more than a week. There you go. Uh, that is a two oh three profit per contract. Beautiful. Deuce caboose. Uh, M.E. coming with a drug announcement any day now. Uh, Mr. T. Hey, Brucey boy, long time no speak. Busy few months for me, buddy. Hope you and Jen are doing well, boss man. Mr. T., welcome. It's good to see you again. Glad to have you here. I know you're always lurking. I know you're around. Way to go, everybody. Um, viewers out there are making money on options. It's just being handed to them like crazy. The gamblers, they lose, and they just grab some more money, and they keep gambling and try to try to hit the big win. You just take the money in the meantime. Nicely done. Um, way to go, um, everybody. <laughs> uh, Michael, did, didn't you say this about yesterday about ME? I'll say it every day, but eventually I'll be right. Uh, Michael, it's true. If you keep saying it every day, sooner or later, ME will take off on you. And it will happen. ME up 27 cents today. That's nice. 367 on ME. Ma Ma Matterport up 6 cents. ATIP was up 3 today to 95.7. Rocket Lab unchanged. It came back and ha, ha, came out to break even at 535. Smart Rent up 11 and a half. Spire up a half a penny. Sextera up 11 cents. Um, SoFi up 28 to 645. GameStop lost 101. Um, um, AMC lost a penny on the common stock. A Ape went up 14 cents. So 
they had a 13 cent gain today not a not a ringing move up but it was a 59 point gain on the dow um bed bath and beyond um where did they end up here uh they ended up uh, up a dollar 58 when it was all said and done at 1036 they got up to 1197 first thing this morning couldn't hold anywhere near that 1036 last trade uh so they gave back a buck 60. um but they traded 113 million today they convinced a lot of people to try and flip it but i would avoid that thing um okay uh, beach boy we're in there what did you say again uh, 10 o'clock uh, 10 o'clock eastern no noon eastern didn't you i think you said noon eastern i gotta i gotta book them in book them dano book them dano uh that's sunday the 28th if i have got this correct and i think we've got uh I think we got them here i'm just gonna write this down before i forget one on one so i have now a an eight o'clock uh, 10 o'clock eastern time opening for a one-on-one -on -one, and i think i have a two o'clock eastern time this sunday open for a one-on-one -on -one. if any of you are interested in a one-on-one -on -one, send me an email and we'll set you, set you up we'll go from there okay way to go guys Noon Eastern, right on. Yeah, noon Eastern. Gotcha. I got gotcha, you, buddy. Mr. T, sorry, I missed you when you came to the UK, by the way. If it's any consolation, I was away in Manchester for a few days when you guys were here. That's right. That's right. We did communicate, I think, about that, didn't we? And we were we were uh, missing each other, but uh, we'll be back again. Oh, yeah. You guys just need some rain. <laughs> Cooler temperatures and rain. Uh, but we'll be, we'll be by another time for sure. Mr. T, you know it's going to happen. I uh, love visiting with some of the viewers in Europe. That was really cool to be able to do that. Um, we uh, we saw we saw a viewer in London, a viewer in Amsterdam. We saw a viewer in Munich. It was great. It was it was just just so nice. Uh, and hopefully we'll do a meet and greet uh, back in the in, st in the states this winter. We'll see if we can put something together. We'll keep you posted on all of that. Well, there you go, kids. That's our day. We're done today. I think we've survived rather well. I think a few of the viewers here have more, more than paid for their classes today with some profits in the markets. Uh, congratulations to all of you out there who've, who are doing really well with this. Uh, thank you again to those of you who uh, picked up four classes for the price of three or more uh, today and uh, yesterday and all last week. Uh, Mr. T, thank you for that notification. I've been a member for 17 months. I'm a serial lurker. Right on. 17 months a member. Chilling with Uncle Bruce. Absolutely fabulous. Uh, I really appreciate that, of course. Uh, and all of you who are members and subscribers, thank you. This is cool bean stuff. Um, Larry, East Coast, not Florida visit. You got to come to the East Coast, man. Uh, Mr. T, ah, it's raining right now. Thank goodness. Uh, but I've resorted to rigging up an irrigation system in my garden. Desperate times, you know. Um, and uh, Michael is saying uh, plus one at uh, not Florida. BW, rubber band is back and ready to launch, says BW. Uh, why the face so far? Why are you acting like a balsa wood model plane and not an F-22 model plane? Mr. T, hope the Bagel family are all doing well. Good to see Larry, Beach Boy, and many other familiar faces and names. Right on, Mr. T. Great to have you here, as always. You're always welcome in this house, as you know. Thank you, everybody, for everything. Uh, Jen and I uh, will get a little bit of uh, off time. I'll see you at 8 o'clock tonight uh, for prime time with Uncle Bruce for Gold Bagel members. And then I'll see all of you again tomorrow morning when we get going and let's make some more moolah. Uh, how about that? Okay. Thank you, everybody. Um, take care, guys. We'll see you tonight at 8 Eastern. All the best.